all of you here to the, pre to the plenary hall. On your tables are shell necklaces or floral lays which have come from the Pacific Islands. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, they get a bit heavy when you put a hundred with your luggage. So we have to apologize to all the other people on the side and up here for not having one with you. It is a custom in our islands that when we visit, we take with us a gift. And that is why all these necklaces and floral lays are on your tables. And now I invite you, please, to exchange this. Give it to your lay or your necklace, the person next to you, and they will reciprocate. Could you do that now, please? As Pacific Islanders, we have come to Vancouver as people whose voices are not heard among the powerful nations. I bring greetings from the Marshall Islands and throughout Micronesia. This is a very important event because I have come to share my life story. As you know, we have been under the United States government for the last 30 some years. Soon after the World War II, the United States, when the United States had a fight with Japan, it signed a UN trusteeship agreement. This agreement was for the United States to protect our health and to prevent the loss of our lands and resources. A promise that was never kept. Before we knew it, our islands were blown up. The United States government did not bother to tell us that four of our islands, two in Bikini and two in Aniweta, were blown up the face of the earth. When the U.S. government officer came from Washington, D.C., he came and see the people of Bikini. He told the chief that the U.S. government were testing the bombs, and I quote, for the good of mankind and to end all world wars. The chief didn't know what that meant because in 1946, none of us spoke English. So he thought the word mankind, it has something to do with God. So he told the US officer, he said, in the name of God, I'm willing to let my people go. But there was one thing the US officer did not tell the chief. He did not tell them that he and his people will never return home. But he told them that he would bring them home back very soon. So the Bikinians thought soon could be tomorrow, it could be next week, or it could be probably next month. And they were willing to sacrifice for it. But the sad thing about this is that the Bikinians did not know that they will be homeless forever. As you know, the Bikinians now today their islands is off limit forever because it's too radioactive. And then the United States government again decided bikini was not enough. It has to test it again. It has to use a, one of our islands, and this time it was Eniweta. There it tested 43 atomic and hydrogen bombs. It's a total in my 
entire islands, the United States tested 66 atomic and hydrogen bombs. Since then, we have had endless of health problems. For example, we have hundreds of women who have miscarriages. We have leukemia cancers. We have thyroid cancers. We have stillbirth babies. We have nowadays, I just come back from home, and I have talked to many women and men in the population, is that we have babies we call jellyfish babies. A baby is born on a labor table and it moves up and down like this. It's a colorful, ugly thing. It does not shape like a human being. It moves up and down like this on a labor table because that thing is breathing. That is a baby. And we have more than 10 of these all over throughout the islands. And although the Department of Energy team who comes and look at us for our illnesses, it only looks at the people who are on the islands that they consider contaminated, and that is Rob and Wutra. And they only look at their throat. They will not, they refuse to look at their children. They refuse to look at the people who have come to the islands and have the similar kind of illnesses. The Department of Energy sent us throughout the United States for the medical surgery on our thyroids. They sent us to New York, they sent us to Hawaii, they sent us to Guam, and still not explain what is the matter with us. As if it's not enough, the United States decided once again to take our island, the biggest atoll in the world, Kwajalein Atoll. This time, they take our islands to use it for missile range. This is where the Vandenberg base that shot all his missiles. And as I understand, the MX missile was just shot this June. It was shot into our islands. Use our islands for missiles. They relocate the people into a very tiny little island. It's called Ebai. This island is only 66 acres of land. There are now more than 8,000 people on these islands. They are crowded in, and we have a hospital that is not only understaffed, but is by no any standard by the U.S. When we are ill and we are very sick, we have to have passes or sp uh, special permission to go to the hospital on Kwajalein, which is U.S. standard hospital. But if we don't get any permission, to go to the hospital, or the colonel is off the island, he's fishing, or maybe he's playing golf. Then many times, our children are going back from Kwajalein Pier to Ebai, and they're dead. This is why in summer of last year, about 1,000 Kwajalein Atoll landowners, they had what they call Operation Homecoming. And that was, they sailed to the two-thirds of their islands, about 11 of their islands, peacefully. They took their women and children, and they sat on the islands. Now, you must remember, the U.S. government has taken two-thirds of our islands. It means we cannot go fishing. We cannot go visit our islands and get more food for the more than 8,000 people. But it means we're stuck into what we call a jail. Can you imagine? The United States government is only leasing our islands, and we have to have our own passes to go to on our own islands? The Marshallese people today, along with the Micronesian, are fighting very hard for self-governing our nations, for independence. But we cannot do this alone without your support. We ask for your support in terms of having our islands to be the way they were. Because in our islands, it's very funny when the United States tell us that they are there to protect us. We turn around and ask them, protect us from whom? We have no enemies. In fact, you might be interested to know that us Marshallese do not have a word for an enemy.
Marshallese are dying out now. My island that is up in the north is also contaminated. I too have three tumors in me. I'm about to have a surgeon and I'm frightened. I don't know whether I should have children or not because I don't know whether I'll have a child that is like a jellyfish baby. I don't know whether I will have a child that has six fingers, a child that has horn on his head. We don't know what is going on. All we know is we must travel throughout the world and share this kind of experience from the bombs so that we must stop it before it gets to you. Remember, we are the victim of the nuclear age. Don't become a victim.